Okay, so let's go to the syllabus now. So you go down, this is again, this is the home. Uh, go down to the syllabus link, click on that. And it takes a second to open. Okay, so here's the information. Um, I'm teaching two sections of the course. Uh, uh, one's 003 and one is 009, 2053. 003 and 2053 009, exact same course, uh, no difference whatsoever, except the 009 course is a lot easier than the 003 course. Actually, that's a joke. They're exactly the same. I just wanted to get the 003 students riled up, see if they're paying attention. Anyway, so um, here is my discussion of the course and um, uh, what what I'm looking for, the, uh, what I what I focus on in Texas history, uh, I talk about uh, Spanish exploration and colonization. I spend a lot of time on the Spanish period, um, which lasted from 1492 until 1821. Those are two dates you'll need to know. I talk about the Mexican period, the arrival of Anglo's and their Af African American captives uh, in Texas, beginning in the 1820s. Talk a lot about the Texas Revolution. It's a very interesting uh, topic and it's hotly contested in 2023, especially what was the role of slavery uh, in the Texas Revolution. I talk about those controversies and you'll be reading about that. Talk about the Texas Republic and what life was like for uh, the Tejanos in Texas after 1836, after Texas became Anglo dominated. Uh, what life was like for the growing population of slaves um, in the period between 1836 and emancipation in 1865. And one of the things about this course, and one of the things I like the most about this course, I talk a lot about indigenous peoples, uh, especially the Comanche, uh, the Lapan Apache, uh, in the uh, indigenous groups that lived around San Antonio. It's a fascinating story. It's a really fascinating story, especially the story of the Comanche. And it's relatively recent. The, Com the Comanche controlled this area up until my grandmother's grandmother's time, uh, up until the 1870s. They controlled the area north of San Antonio uh, into the hill country in, in, in West Texas. So basically the, the Comanche had a, an empire that existed until the 1870s, until it was suppressed and the Comanche uh, were forced to move into Oklahoma. Um, so anyway, so I, I talk a lot about indigenous groups, the, the suppression of indigenous groups, the, the rise of the cattle industry in Texas. And that's pretty much uh, where this course goes. It goes to the late 19th century. I, I don't talk too much about 20th century Texas at all. Um, I just would rather do a really good job on the period of Texas history from 1492 till about 1900, because I think it's very interesting. So that's the way I teach the course. Um, let's see here. You know, one of the things I wanna uh, talk about up front, I'll talk about the quizzes and the midterms, but um, just to get you guys uh, um, off the schneid, as we say, uh, the first quiz is going to be posted on Friday morning, uh, August 25th, uh, which is a week from next Friday. It's nine days from today. Normally, quizzes are going to be posted on Mondays, but I'm posting the first quiz on Friday because um, I want you to get to work on the course. I don't want you. That's the problem or the challenge with an online course. You know, you don't see me, I don't see you. It's just kind of floating there in the, you know, cyberspace. And um, the secret to doing well, and, and I'm sure a lot of you have been exposed to online courses by now, uh, for better or for worse. I know a lot of y'all went through COVID. Um, so online courses aren't really a mystery to you, but you probably know, and you've had many professors and teachers tell you, you just have to create a structure. You have to get going. You can't blow it off. You shouldn't wait to the last second. And you know what? I'll just say everything uh, other folks have said to you because it's correct. So just to make sure you get going uh, in this course uh, during the first week of classes, um, I'm going to get. I'm going to post the first quiz on uh, Friday, the 25th. 
and it'll be due on 11:59 p.m. on Monday the 28th. So it's a it's a tight turnaround uh, for the first quiz. Uh, every other quiz will be posted on uh, Monday, and I'll talk about that uh, later. But I just want to signal you right now that the first quiz is coming up fast because I want you to break ice in this course. I want you to get going. I want you to start doing the reading and start thinking about uh, what it is I'm teaching you and how I'm teaching you. I just want you to get going, okay? Um, let's see now. The readings in this course, and I'll talk more about quizzes later, by the way, uh, in great detail. I'm, I just want to signal you up front that, hey, you've got a quiz coming up um, on the Friday of the first week of class. And, but you've got until the, the following Monday at um, uh, about midnight, basically, to, to take that quiz. Um, the two readings, uh, required readings for the course, uh, you know better than I do that you, there's a million different places that you can get books in 2023. Uh, one is called uh, Forget the Alamo uh, by uh, Burroughs, Tomlinson, and Stanford. Very interesting and controversial book. Uh, about Texas history, uh, really, um, really in some ways up to today. It, it's not only the story of the Alamo itself and the Texas Revolution. What's interesting is it's the story about the fight over the memory of the Alamo, which is still very, very much with us today. And um, so, yeah, that's why I assigned it. I, I wanted you to get a sense of uh, the fact that in 2023, believe it or not, people are still fighting about the meaning and the history of the Alamo. People care about history. <laughs> it's so funny because I, I, my guess is there's you know a portion of you think that history is completely pointless. Why would anybody care about it? But people do. And one of the reasons they do is uh, history gets very tied up with personal identity. And so if you praise one section of history, it puffs up your identity. If you criticize something, uh, you feel like it's an attack against identity. History really shapes the world that we're in today. It, it, it's anything but inert, very, very significant. One of my favorite sayings is you may not care about history, but history cares about you. And that's one of the things I wanna teach you this semester. Uh, in addition to Texas history. And let me just say that again, you may not care about history, but history cares about you. Every single second of your life uh, is shaped by what happened before. Okay, so two books uh, that I'm gonna ask you to purchase. By the way, Empire of the Summer Moon, uh, uh, I, can, uh, I can post a PDF of that book, which I'll do on the module. I, I haven't done it yet, but I, uh, I'm writing myself uh, a note. I, if you want to save some money, uh, I can post that on a PDF, but there's a million ways to purchase these books. I'm also going to ask you to watch two movies this semester, two of the best movies on Texas history. One's called The Searchers. You can rent it for $3.99, or there's a DVD uh, of it in the JPL library. John Peace Library, and you can watch it in the library. The other movie is called Lone Star, um, the same thing. So I'm asking you to purchase or get access to, um, uh, to two books and then also uh, two movies. By the way, the two books will also be on reserve at the JPL Library as well. If you don't wanna spend the money uh, to buy the books, they'll be on reserve for, you can check them out for two hours. Okay, now there will be other readings in addition to uh, the books. In fact, they're, uh, the books are only about half the readings. And uh, I'm gonna, I didn't list those readings here, but they'll be post, they're posted on the, on the class syllabus and you'll access those readings on uh, Canvas. I used to assign a third book, but my third book never really worked. I could never find one I was very happy with. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna post material, especially primary material, the actual historical sources themselves on Canvas for you to access. Uh, that saves you some money. And for me, I, I think it uh, does a better job of covering what I want to cover. So there's books that I'm asking you to read, movies I'm asking you to rent, and there's other material that you will access via Canvas. 
you'll also be watching um you'll also be watching uh documentaries that i post i'll po post those urls on canvas as well everything really goes uh through canvas let's see here uh, the quizzes and midterms uh the quizzes, there'll be a quiz almost every week this semester. I quiz you heavily because I don't think students do the reading unless they're quizzed. I never did the reading unless I was quizzed. I wasn't really the best student as an undergrad. So um, anyway, I'm trying to learn the lessons um, that I wish I had learned earlier. So uh, there's, I think, 11 uh, quizzes. They're almost every week, and I'm dropping the lowest quiz grade. So the lowest quiz grade will be dropped. Um, you might have a bad week or miss one, but so I'll drop the lowest quiz grade. And then there's three midterms. The first midterm, um, I think, comes in week five, and it just covers the material between now and week five. <clears throat> the second midterm, I forget when it is, it's probably like week 10 or something like that. And it covers the material between midterm one and midterm two. And the same with midterm three. It covers the material between midterm two and midterm three. So I'm calling them midterms, um, but there's no cumulative final in this class where you have to, uh, you'll be tested on everything you've learned from August 21st until uh, Thanksgiving or the week after Thanksgiving. So the, the midterms are uh, the discrete parts of the class. Okay, so that's important to note. I don't drop the midterm grades. Uh, those all count, um, but I do drop one quiz. So a lot of tests in this class, a lot of quizzes. I just want to keep your head in the game. Um, there are extra credit opportunities in the class, uh, which I'll talk about that uh, uh, as the semester goes. The most popular one is, is students visit the missions and take a picture and send it to me. And students really love that extra credit because you're going to learn a lot about the missions and the folks that live there, both the Spanish and the indigenous people. But there will be extra credit uh, uh, in this course as well. Okay, let me stop there and then I'll start another uh, podcast in a second.